Hello there friends, it's your boy here with another episode of All The Mods. And in the last episode, we set up our Well of Suffering to get automated LP, I didn't mean to do that. And so to begin this episode, I want to go ahead and improve our Blood Altar a little bit more by tailoring it to that Well of Suffering. So instead of these runes of self-sacrifice, we're going to turn this into blank runes. And then we're going to make some runes of just regular old sacrifice. And so when we place down these runes, anytime a mob gets sacrificed and puts LP into our blood altar, like in our Well of Suffering, these are going to give us a 10% increase in how much LP we get. So having eight of those around, that is an 80% increase in total. So that's going to give us quite a bit more mileage out of our Well of Suffering, which is good because I am going to be using a little bit more LP, although I'm not going to be using that much more. Because in this episode, we are going to be making a blood magic cobble work. So if you guys don't know, you can actually get a lot of different items from cobblestone, and you get it from processing through various machines. You can get sand and gravel, and from that sand and gravel, you can get glass and silicon and flint and gunpowder. All very useful stuff for crafting. So the idea of a cobble works is to take a cobblestone generator, harvest the cobblestone, and create as many different items as possible from that cobblestone. And we are going to be using the ritual of the crusher. So we'll lay that down, and then we will pop on our weak activation crystal, and that's already going to start doing some stuff. So if we go down below, we can see that this Ritual of the Crusher is actually crushing blocks, and all the blocks that it breaks are getting dropped on top of the Master Ritual Stone, just right on top there. So this thing is going to mine a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube right under it. As you can see, it's going to mine this block, and it'll mine anything that comes into any of these spaces. And not just cobblestone, it'll break like obsidian. I don't have any other blocks on me. So whenever this Ritual breaks blocks, it is going to use, I believe, 7 LP for each block broken. And so we're going to use this to actually break the cobblestone in our cobblestone generator, but there is a problem. This thing is breaking way too many blocks. We just want this thing to break one block in the range. We don't need it to break 27 total in this 3x3x3 three by three by three cube. So there is actually an item that we can make to customize our rituals a bit more. And that item is going to be the Ritual Tinkerer. So we're going to need at least a Master Blood Orb from this. We're also going to need glass. So you're going to need at least a Master Blood Orb, which is at least a tier 4 altar. So keep that in mind. Mind. And actually, before we use the Ritual Tinker on our cobble works, let's go ahead and try it out on some of the rituals we already had going, like our Well of Suffering. Because right now there is a little bit of a problem. You can see that the mobs are taking two ticks of damage, and that's because they're in range of the Well of Suffering and the little crystal ritual we have going. I think it's like the Gathering of the Forsaken Souls or something like that. And this is not good because sometimes the Well of Suffering is killing these mobs, so that means that the crystal ritual is not actually getting any benefits from these mobs. So so I am going to specify the range on this Well of Suffering, and so this Ritual Tinker has a few different modes, Set Well Consume, Define Area Information. Information will just literally give you information about what the ritual does, but let's go to Define Area, and then we can shift right click on the Master Ritual Stone, and then it's going to tell us what we're defining the area of. So right now, we're defining the range where the ritual will damage a mob, so let's set it to just the corners of this room, so it only kills the zombies in this room, because that's all I actually want to be killed and now it should only be killing the zombies so if we go down we should see these mobs only taking one tick of damage and that's only from the crystal ritual so that's perfect now the crystal ritual will always kill these mobs and it'll always get the benefits from every mob that spawns there are still some problems though like this spider is not getting killed because it climbed up on top of that block and I would love to redefine the range of the crystal thing to encompass this entire room, but unfortunately I didn't blend this out very well, so it's just out of range. The block where the mobs are standing is actually the lowest point, that's why I had to get rid of all these stairs and half slabs and stuff, but it's better than nothing. A spider lingering here and there is not too too bad. All right, so let's actually customize our Ritual of the Crusher. So if you just shift right click on Define Area Mode, we can define the area that it will crush. And I'm gonna crush these three blocks. Now we can do a pretty big area with this. We can get even bigger than the default. You can crush up to 50 blocks. There is a maximum range though, so you can't go too far away from the Master Ritual Stone. But all I want to do is break these three blocks, which this is going to do, and it's going to put the items on top of the Master Ritual Stone. But we can also change that. So if we set down a chest, we can shift right click again, and that's going to cycle through the different options you have for defining the area. So there's crushing, and then there's where the chest is. So if we're on chest, and we just double click on this chest, now the items that it breaks are not going to go onto the Ritual Stone, but rather they are going to go straight into this chest. And this will work with any sort of inventory, and by default you can actually place a chest directly on 
top of the Master Ritual Stone. And if you don't define an area, it'll go straight into the chest, but it's a lot more convenient if you do it this way. So now that that's set up, we can put a cobblestone generator right here. Well, actually, this is going to be a stone generator, but it's all the same. The stone will form, it'll get broken, and that will automatically put all that cobblestone into this chest. So that's working fine and dandy, but I do have a problem with this, and that's that it is pretty ugly. I don't like looking at the lava and water, so we're actually going to change this. Instead of generating the stone right here, I think we're actually going to teleport the stone upwards onto that block for our ritual to break. So if we come over and put some ender pearls into at least a tier four altar, those will go in and use 2000 LP and they will create some teleposition focuses. So we got three of them for the three ender pearls. And now we're gonna use these to craft another blood magic block, the teleposer, and we're gonna need at least a couple of these. So these teleposers are going to swap the positions of two blocks in your world. So we'll place down two and that's where the blocks are gonna get teleposed right on top and then we need to shift right click on one of those teleposers and that'll bind those coordinates to this focus and then we need to place that focus inside of the other teleposer that we did not shift right click and so if we slap on a button and put a block on whenever we give this one with the focus actually in it a redstone signal it's going to swap the positions of these two blocks so right now it looks like this block is just getting teleported because it's swapping this air block right here with that cobblestone block but if we were to put down a stone block you'll see more of what it's actually doing it's actually just swapping the positions like that and this is actually pretty powerful you can swap chests and other tile entities and also you can expand the range so there are different tiers of teleposition focuses and each of these is going to move a larger range of blocks so the tier 2 is going to do a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube on top of the teleposer I think this tier is going to do a 5x5x5 five by five by five, then 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven. so if you want to move larger sort of structures you can do that with these teleposition focuses but we're only going to use the one block I believe so instead of putting our stone generator up up here, we're actually gonna go downstairs here underneath our ritual out of sight. We're gonna set up our stone generator in here. So this should work out if we just place a lava here. This stone will generate on top of this teleposer so it is ready to teleport whenever it forms. So we will go up and actually place down our other teleposer and we're gonna place it down right here. And I like the way that texture looks a lot more than having the lava and water showing. So let's go ahead and grab our teleposition focus. We can shift right click on that. That'll link it to that specific block and then we just need to put that inside of this teleposer. And then whenever we give this a redstone signal, that is going to get teleported. And so to make this automated, I went ahead and got a redstone clock from XD Utilities. So we can just hook that up with a piece of redstone and that's going to automatically teleport that stone every once in a while. So if we go up, we can kind of see what it's doing. But you can see this also has some problems right now. Actually, you can see that it is teleporting the stone block before it gets broken by our ritual. So we're not actually getting any cobblestone from this right now. So we're going to have to set up a bit of logic to for one make sure that this block is getting broken before another one is teleposed and two make sure that we're not teleposing unnecessarily because these teleposers do use a bit of LP so for each block the teleposers are away from each other it's going to cost one LP and although it's not much I don't like using LP whenever we don't have to so I went ahead and made some RF tool sensors and we're going to take advantage of the fact that if you give a redstone signal to these extra utilities clocks they're going to stop so the first thing we're going to do is just make sure there is actually a stone block there before it gets teleported. So we'll set down the sensor and we've used these before, but if we specify the block, it will output a redstone signal if it meets all these conditions. So if there's a block, one area in front of the sensor, and at least one of those is that block, and we can change the area up to five blocks, but we only want one that will give off a redstone signal. So if we look now, that should be on, but as soon as we actually break this, it should turn off, then turn back on once the stone gets generated. So we will invert that signal and then run that into the redstone clock. So so right now the redstone clock is running because there is actually a stone block there, but whenever the stone block is not there, that's going to turn off temporarily, then turn back on once it generates. And I actually went ahead and swapped the position of the stone generator because I realized it would be a lot more convenient if it was right here, because the next sensor we're going to place is actually going to go right on this block. And that's because right above the sensor, in fact, exactly five blocks above this sensor is where the teleposer and where the stone block is. So we can set up the sensor to detect stone and an area of five and make it so only one needs to be matched and that's going to be the one stone block above this teleposer so if there already is a stone block above this teleposer it's saying don't telepose another stone block because we'd just be swapping stone block for stone block which doesn't make any sense we don't need to do that so now if we set down a repeater and this repeater is necessary we do need a bit of a delay for this to really work correctly now it is going to wait until that stone block is actually broken before it creates another one 
because this sensor is going to turn on whenever there is a stone block up there and it's not broken, as you can see, sort of, I don't know. It does work though. So now we don't have that problem where it's getting teleposed before the stone block actually generates and it'll turn off whenever we don't need it. Oh, gully dokely. So our stone is still doing its thing, but we can actually make this system a lot better. And one of those ways is by adding some better storage in this random chest. So I'm going to place down some storage drawers. So I'll place three on the bottom, two on the top, and then a two by two in the middle. But I do want to connect these up with some trim and that'll connect all those up to the same sort of network. So even though these drawers are not directly adjacent, if we place down a drawer controller and we can place that down, I don't know, like right there seems fine. This drawer controller is still going to be able to access all of these drawers because they're connected up by trim. So now I'm just going to place a hopper leading into that drawer. And now we can take the ritual tinkerer and go to the chest option for define area and we can put it on this hopper. So all the cobblestone is going to go into the hopper and then into the drawer once we actually right click this drawer to sort of update it. So that's a really easy way to improve it. We now have a bunch of cobblestone going into this drawer, but there is a cooler way to improve this. And it's also going to allow us to get all the other blocks inside of our cobble works. So in the last episode, we did this will crystal setup. And in this chunk, we have a bunch of will just floating in our aura. So if we shift, we can see all the different types of will. And the cool thing is that some rituals can actually utilize this will. So if we take the ritual tinker and go into information mode, if we shift right click on an active ritual and it comes up with a bunch of these other options like destructive, corrosive, steadfast, that means that this ritual can utilize all those different types of will to give the ritual some different effects. So we can give it fortune three, silk touch, and we can also use cutting fluid, which is gonna become important later. But right now let's try out the silk touch. But first we actually need to get some will into that chunk because right now all the will is going into this chunk and none of it is going into that one where the ritual actually is. So we can actually do this pretty simply by coming to our Hellfire Forge and making a demon pylon. So we can take this demon pylon and place it in a chunk that does not have any will burning into the aura with our demon crucibles over there. So we'll place it in this chunk, of course. So let's just plop that down. And this demon pylon is going to search the chunks directly adjacent to it for demon will in the aura. But it is not actually going to search the chunks that are diagonal to it. So it's not gonna search these chunks if this is the center chunk that the demon pylon is actually in. It's only going to search the ones that are in the four cardinal directions like that. So the demon pylon is here and it's gonna search all these other chunks and if there is demon will in the aura of one of these chunks, it is going to evenly distribute that aura between those two chunks. So if you bring out our aura gauge, you can see that there is actually some will in this aura in this chunk. And it has weird numbers because I, I messed up and I had to redo this section. But now let's actually use that aura. So let's go back to the information and we can see that the steadfast is going to give us silk touch and it's going to override any fortune that's on it. So if we have both of them, it's going to use silk touch before it uses fortune. So let's go ahead and grab some steadfast will here and the way we are going to set the will type is by going to set will consumed and any will you want the ritual to actually use needs to be on your hotbar so i'm going to put this steadfast will crystal on my hotbar and then i'm just going to shift right click when i'm on set will consumed mode and it's going to set that to a steadfast will and now that that is using steadfast will it is going to break this stone block with silk touch and right now it's not actually going to do anything because we don't have a drawer set for that so now our stone is going up instead of our cobblestone because we're breaking the stone block with our silk touch effect. But that sort of brings up a problem. Now we're not actually getting any cobblestone, which is another vital part of our cobble works. And to actually get cobblestone, we're going to use some actually additions placers and breakers, but we're going to make the phantom version of those and we're going to need a phantom face. So these phantom versions of the placer and the breaker are going to allow us to hide the placer and breaker so we don't have to look at them just like our little stone generator. And I'm going to set them right here and right here and hopefully that is in range. And essentially we just right click on the block just like phantom faces and then we right click on the phantom placer and we can specify what side we want it to place on. We can go all of the directions, but I'm going to keep it to up because that's where I do want it to place. And so let's place in some cobblestone. And when we go up and we break this block, hopefully it should get replaced with cobblestone and it does, which is beautiful. So what we're going to do, we're just going to place down the stone regularly with a placer and then we're going to break it with a phantom breaker. So let's just hook up the connector to that same block and then we can hook it up to the phantom breaker. And now that's going to automatically break that block, hopefully. So these phantom placers and breakers have a sort of small range. It's only three blocks. Thank you. 
but it's enough for this, and you can actually extend them by using phantom boosters. But you can see this placer is placing the stone, the breaker is breaking it, and then all the cobblestone is ending up right in this phantom breaker. And so I'm gonna hook up some conduits to extract from this breaker, and we're going to extract on the brown channel, let's say always active. And then for our drawer controller, we're going to insert on the brown channel. So it'll extract that cobblestone, hopefully, and put that straight into the drawer, which it's doing just fine. And then we're going to give this placer a constant supply of stone by setting it to insert, and and then we will go ahead and filter that to only stone. And then we'll just tell the drawer controller to go on in out mode and it will extract on the green channel always active. So that should be getting stone now and that is getting broken down into cobblestone. So this seems counterintuitive when we could just go straight to cobblestone, but actually once this cobblestone barrel actually gets full, this will stop placing and breaking, which is going to just net us a bunch of stone, which is perfect. And speaking of these stopping placing, let's actually set up some logic for that. So we're gonna detect whenever these storage drawers are full. So this is the stone drawer, this is the cobblestone drawer. So I'm gonna place a couple of inventory checkers down and we're gonna set that slot to one. We're gonna set the amount to 4,096 because I am going to put one of these times two storage upgrades in there. So by default, I believe it is 2048, but then whenever you multiply by two, it ends up 4096, and we're gonna whitelist cobblestone, and we'll do the same thing for the stone. So these will give off a redstone signal when that is true, and so whenever this barrel is full of stone, we want this teleposer to stop actually teleposing. So we are going to hook up some of these redstone conduits here, and we are going to lead this one straight down into this clock here. So when the stone is full, it's going to output a signal, and we'll say that is signal color red, and we'll keep this one as red and we'll put strong signal on that may as well but when the cobblestone is full we will set down another conduit and we are going to set this to green this time and then we will set this placer which was placing down the stone we will set that to green as well so whenever the cobblestone barrel is full this placer is going to stop placing stone so instead of shutting off the ritual we are going to shut off the block placement for the ritual if that makes any sense oakily dokily so our generator has been running for a while and we've gotten quite a bit of cobblestone but it's time to actually start making some other items with that cobblestone and we're going to do that using the same ritual again so if we just shift right click on information mode we're going to use some different types of will so we're going to be using this cutting fluid mode of the ritual of the crusher using the corrosive will so the alchemy table has a few recipes that use cutting fluid you can see it's mainly used for ore doubling actually you put in an ore and some cutting fluid and it's going to give you two of that ore out but even though the description says it's only going to use cutting fluid fluid, whenever we put corrosive will into our ritual the crusher, it's also going to be able to use explosive powder. So if we put in a piece of cobblestone with explosive powder, we get gravel. And if we put in a piece of gravel with explosive powder, we get sand. So you can kind of see where this is going, hopefully. So let's go ahead and grab a bit of corrosive will. And we're also going to need another piece of steadfast will. And we're going to put both those on our hot bar. And then whenever we go into set will consumed, we can shift right click and that'll set it to both of those. And it's not additive. So we did need that steadfast will crystal again in order for that to work. So now our ritual is trying to use that cutting fluid or explosive powder, but because stone does not have any recipes with either of those two items, it's just going to use Silk Touch. Because that explosive powder or cutting fluid is going to override Silk Touch whenever it can. So actually if we place down a piece of cobblestone and a piece of gravel, it's going to break both of those and in our hopper we should see a piece of gravel and a piece of sand. So we'll put gravel in that barrel and sand in that barrel. And then we just got to hook up some placers for those. So I made a couple more phantom placers which we will just set down. And we will filter this one to only insert cobblestone and we will set that to insert on the green channel and then this one is only going to insert gravel so it's placing down the gravel and this ritual right now is sort of taking precedence on the right side of the blocks being broken which is completely fine so we're gonna get sand before we get anything else right now I'm not too bothered about it we'll get sand gravel cobblestone and then stone in that order eventually we'll just build up enough of a buffer of all these to where it won't really matter and so really the final thing to do is just set up the redstone logic for these so we're gonna set up some more inventory checkers so whenever this gravel drawer is full with 4096 gravel it is going to output a redstone signal and we will say that this one will be the brown channel and then we will hook that up to this placer which is placing the cobblestone that gets turned in to gravel and we'll say that is also going to be on the brown channel strong signal may as well and when the sand drawer gets full that's going to loop all the way back around and down to here and it's going to link up to this placer which is placing down the gravel that gets turned into sand and we will set that to the purple channel, I think. Did we already?
already used the blue channel? No, no, we're gonna use the blue channel. And so now whenever these barrels get nice and full, each of these two blocks will stop placing. So the gravel will stop placing whenever the sand gets full. The cobblestone will stop placing whenever the gravel gets full. And that'll make it so the ritual won't actually break anything. Oakley dokley. So I think it's time we move on and make some more products out of our cobble work. So we're gonna need a couple of alchemy tables for the next two items we're going to make. And that's because we're gonna be making some clay using a water bucket and some sand. And we're also gonna be making flint using some gravel and another piece of flint. And we can keep duplicating this flint essentially. But first we are going to do the clay recipe because we already have a bit of sand backing up here. So for the clay recipe, we actually need at least a magician blood orb. So I have that and it's already linked to me. So we're going to do a very similar thing to what we did with our obsidian setup. We are going to have a reservoir that's filled up with water to make that an infinite water source and a ender IO tank. But of course, we're going to need to set that to auto output out of that side before we put down the tank. And now it's filling with water. And then we can put a water bucket in this slot and it'll fill up automatically. And then we can pipe out of that with some conduits. So we'll set both of these to in out mode here. And on the extraction, we'll set this to always active, but we want to filter that to only extract water buckets. And on this one, we will do the same exact thing. And we will set that to only extract water buckets as well. And I did realize I messed up. That's supposed to be an empty bucket towards the alchemy table. I was wondering why I was so confused. So now if we put in an empty bucket into the alchemy table, that is going to take out and put back in a full water bucket every single time. So we will always have a full water bucket. The only thing we need to do is supply it with some sand. So we're going to use an ESD for that. And the reason we're going to use an ESD is so that we only ever have one stack of sand actually in there. So we always have room for that empty bucket to be extracted and then refilled. So we will insert, we will filter some sand once I grab some sand. But now it is filled with sand. And if we bring up our F3, we're facing east. So we want to set the outbound side to east like so. And that's already going to start putting stuff in. But we are going to specify slots one and two is the only place you can actually put in sand. And that's going to keep making clay. So this water bucket is going to get taken out and it's going to get put back in as a full bucket. So the way these slots work on the alchemy table, whenever we're talking about the ESD, the slot where the blood orb goes, that's slot zero. Then the slots around the side, that is slots one, two, three, four, five, and six. The slot in the middle is slot seven. And then this slot over here is slot eight. So this is slot one right here, right around the ring. So then all that's left to do is just make a little slot for that clay. And then we just need to extract the clay out of the bottom here. And we will extract on the brown channel, always active, because that is how the controller is actually inserting. So that is going to keep producing and I'm also going to throw on a times two upgrade onto that just for good measure and I've already made room for a bit of flint which is going to go over here and this one is actually significantly easier to do. We're just going to hook up a couple of ESDs both of them facing west on the outbound side and this one is going to go from slot one to two and this one will go west on slot two to three and we'll put in that blood orb. We only need a weak blood orb to make flint. And then we're gonna set this one to insert only flint. And then we're going to set this one to insert only gravel. And then we will also just extract at the bottom of this on the brown channel while we're at it, always active. And then all we have to do is just hook that up to our main little conduit system here. And that should work just fine. Although we probably aren't going to be able to make too much flint right now because we don't have a lot of gravel. We have to wait for all the sand products like clay to get done and the, for this barrel to actually fill up before the gravel will actually start being made. But the flint that was already in the system is getting put in there and if we put in a piece of gravel that's going to make flint get extracted and then that's going to feed back in. So as long as we have a little bit of flint in our system we can essentially just keep duplicating flint. Oh, Kali Dokali. So we're on the home stretch here. Really, the last two items we're going to make are pretty much the easiest. So we're just going to set down a power cell and set that to output. I already have this linked up to our main power network, so that's going to get filled up nice and quick. And then we're just going to set down an alloy smelter and a sag mill. And each of these we are just going to set to insert only sand. And that's going to make it so from the alloy smelter we get glass and then from the sag mill we are going to get silicon so i'll just pop both of those into the drawers and this one is going to get a big drawer for glass and then we just need to set both of these two in out and extract on the brown channel and really ender io machines are the best way to get these items you can't get silicon any other way really and blood magic doesn't really have a furnace so i had to use ender io furnace but it works just fine and we're getting glass and we're getting silicon we're making clay things are going well we're just really bottlenecked by how fast this ritual is actually moving, which is pretty slow, to be honest. It can only break
break one block at a time, and it breaks those blocks pretty slowly. But if we just let this sit here for long enough, eventually everything will build up and we'll have a nice supply of all of these materials. Oakley dokely. So our cub works has been running for a while, and we're now full up on silicon and clay, which is good, but we're still making glass. We're only at 550 glass. We got a lot more glass to go before this fills up, and therefore until all these other drawers fill up. So this is going to take freaking forever. I'm probably going to get rid of the times to upgrade eventually, but uh, it, it'll it'll get there. But in the mean and in between time, I actually want to finish up this episode by doing some stuff with our living armor that we made a while ago. I changed my mind on some of the upgrades that I want. And so we are going to set up another Sound of the Cleansing Soul like we did before, and this was the ritual that got rid of all of our upgrades. So you'll remember whenever I activated this ritual, it got rid of all of our living armor upgrades and it gave us some tomes instead. And so we're gonna be doing some stuff with those tomes, but right now I actually wanna go ahead and make a new item. And that's going to be the item repair from actually addition. So we're going to need an ender casing, which is really expensive. And this item repair is really, really expensive as well, but probably for good reason, because this thing is really, really powerful. So the item repair is going to take any item that can't normally be repaired or just any item that has a durability in general, and it's going to repair it. And it's going to use a ton of RF. This uses like 5k RF per tick or something like that. But it is a lot more convenient than repairing some of your other items. So this living armor, in order to repair it, I actually need to make more binding reagent and that stuff is not very fun to make and it takes forever and I need a lot of it in order to repair this armor. I already did it once and it took a ton of levels and a ton of binding reagent but now I can just throw it into our item repair and it'll do it automatically and we have quite a bit of power backup so we don't have to worry about running out too soon. And there we go we actually completely ran out of power as I say that we don't really have to worry about running out of power. Our refined storage shut down and everything but everything is fully repaired and the reason I did actually want to fully repair everything is because there is a new upgrade with this living armor actually so if we get rid of our training bracelet we're going to be able to train this and I'm just going to walk into this cactus in order to train it and there it is I finally got it I had to actually bring my cactus over here by the regen stone because I was losing too much health and also I had to do a full repair again of my armor actually I had to do a couple like intermediate repairs as well because in order to get the repairing upgrade that we just got which is that new upgrade that I was talking about you have to take 500 points points of damage on your armor, specifically the chest plate, but of course you have to have all your armor on to actually upgrade anything. And actually now that we've done that, we do need to get rid of all these level 1 upgrades we've gotten that are not repairing, so I'm going to do another one of these cleansing soul rituals here. And then also we are going to make sure to put on our training bracelet so we don't get any more on the way back over to our base. So now that we have all these tomes in our inventory, we are going to go ahead and use these. So before we didn't actually use our tomes, but we will use them this time because if you right click with one of your tomes it'll actually automatically apply that upgrade onto your armor so right there we just put repairing onto our armor and repairing only has one level so there's only one level of repairing but it will slowly repair your armor over time and it is quite slow so you can't expect it to go too quickly it's maybe one point per minute or so but it's better than nothing so we don't always have to use this item repair it'll do it by itself and so we're going to skip soft fall this time I don't actually want soft fall on my armor I've decided I'm actually just gonna throw that away and instead we're gonna go ahead and put on healthy and quick feet and bodybuilder just by using our upgrade tomes like that so we don't have to level up those skills again we can go straight to level 8 and level 5 and whatnot so that is going to allow us to get some more useful upgrades other than softfall because softfall will not be very useful in the future and it'll also allow me to get some more levels in healthy and I also am gonna try and get some tough skin which gives us protection but that will have to be in the future because that is where I'm gonna leave you guys for this episode. Sorry we maybe didn't do too much this episode. I did not think that the Cobble Works was going to take us this long. I thought it'd be pretty simple, but it was not. But I think it did turn out pretty cool in the end. It works well, although it is sort of slow. But I think that once we actually get all of the drawers filled up, it'll be a lot more useful because it'll just have to replace a few blocks instead of five barrels full of blocks. But anyways, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching my videos. If you made it this far, you're a champion and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.